ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد يا عباد الله الحمد لله على نعمه الاسلام والسنه all praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the sunnah bila shak wa bila raib this is a ni'mah that is azimah this is a tremendous bounty in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has bestowed upon us and that he has guided us to the deen he has guided us to Islam that he has given us the success in submitting ourselves unto him as muslims ya ibadullah this is of tremendous and tremendous and tremendous benefit and importance that we remember the likes of this blessing and thus we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it and that we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank him for all of the ni'am all of the bounties in which he has bestowed upon us ya ibadullah if we only understood and know how important the salah is if we only understood and really knew how important the prayer is and its connection to success in every which way shape and form there is not a single one from amongst us except that he or she wants to be successful and that is possible but not without salah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says about the believers inside of his noble book qad aflah al mu'minun that those who believe they are already successful qad aflah al mu'minun those who believe they are successful and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gives to us some of their characteristics some of their traits some of their attributes allah ta'ala he says alladhina hum fi salatihim khashi'un those who they have humility inside of their prayer when they pray they have khushu' they have khushu' unto allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they have attentiveness they have humility inside of their prayer ila qawlihi ta'ala unto allah ta'ala statement wal ladina hum ala salawatihim yuhafizun and those who they are preserving over their salawat those who they are preserving over their prayers those who preserve their prayers not just those who pray their prayers these are those who pray their prayers and they bring extra because they preserve their prayers these are those who prayer is essential to them these are those who prayer is important for them these are those who prayer their life is centered around their prayer and their worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah ta'ala he says that these ones who are upon their prayers they preserve their prayers ulaika humul warithun these are the ones who they shall inherit inherit what alladhina yarithuna alfirdaws 
these ones who they shall inherit firdaus the best part of Jannah, the highest part of Jannah, Al Firdaus. There is not a single one from amongst us except that he wants to go to Jannah. There's not a single one from amongst us who, if they enter into Jannah, except that they will want Al Firdaus. Do you want Firdaus? It is possible, but not without Salah. Allah Ta'ala, He says, Hum fiha khalidun. They shall be therein forever. They will be inside of the Jannah, they will be inside of the best part of the Jannah forever. What are some of their characteristics? These are those who have khushur inside of their prayer. So this means that they are those who pray. These are those who they safeguard and protect their prayer. These are those who establish their prayer. Ya ibadullah, if we want success, it's possible, but not without salat. Allah Azza wa Jal, He tells us about human beings. He tells us about the nature of human beings. Allah Ta'ala, He says, Inna al-insana khuliqa Halu'a, that verily insan, he has been made as halu'a. What is the meaning of hala? What is the meaning of hala? The ulama they explain that what is meant by hala, yufassiru, yufassiru, bima jaa ba'dahu. That it will be explained in that which comes after it, meaning from those ayat that come after this particular ayat. The summary is that this one who has the characteristic, the dispraiseworthy characteristic of hala, then this is an individual qalil sabr. They have very little patience. This is an individual who they have no patience. Wa qalil shukr. And this is a person who they are ungrateful. They don't show thanks. They don't show thanks. This is an ingrate. This is one who is impatient, so on and so forth. This is the nature of insan. Wa hadha halul insan. This is the situation. This is the situation of the human being. This is the status of the human being when they have very little trust and dependency upon Allah. This is the human condition. This is the human condition when they have very little trust and reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala, He says, Inna al insana. That verily insan, some of the ulama, like Imam Ibn Jarir, they explain that insan, what is meant by insan, ay al kafir, that it means the disbeliever. That verily the disbeliever, they are the ones who are upon this characteristic, they are the ones who have hala, they are the ones who they have very little patience, they are the ones who they are ungrateful, they have no gratitude, no appreciation. That this is for the kafir. And thus, what is understood when it brings the exception, as Allah Ta'ala He says, except for, except for who? Except for those who? Except for those who pray. Except for those who? Except for those who pray. That what is meant by those who pray, what is meant by إِلَّا الْمُصَلِّينَ أَهْلِ iman, Except for those who have iman. However, you have other from the ulama, like Al-Hafid ibn Kathir, he mentions that this is the situation of human beings as a whole. He mentions, he says, well, who are ladhi, yani, and this is the one that al hafid ibn Kathir, he took as, as an opinion. He said, this is what is correct. insan min This is the description of, of, of human beings in general. This is the nature of human beings is that they are impatient. They have the characteristic of hala. Allah Ta'ala, he says that insan, the human beings, they have been created and they are halu'a. They are very impatient. They show very little gratitude, so on and so forth. إِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ jazua That when harm reaches them, they are jazua, Meaning, غير رَاضٍ They don't, they're not happy with it, they're displeased with it, they're easily irritated, so on and so forth. وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعًا And when good reaches them, then they are niggardly. When good reaches them, they are stingy, they are miserly, they are niggardly when the good reaches them. They don't want to give. So the one who has the characteristic of hala, so we understand better as it comes inside of the, the language, if you said this person, sahibul hala, this person has the characteristic of hala. This is a person who they are striving, striving after that which benefits them, but then they stingy, they don't want to give to nobody else. 
So when it comes to getting theirs, they leave no stone unturned. They got to get theirs. But when it comes to giving back, to being generous, to giving to people and being kind and so on and so forth, then they don't want nothing to do with that. They want theirs and they don't want to give you yours. They want to get theirs. They don't want to share. This is the nature of human beings, except for, except for those whom Allah Ta'ala has given them the success in becoming Muslim, except for those whom Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He has guided them to Islam, except for those whom Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He has allowed the Iman to enter into their hearts, except for those who, except for those who pray. So the ulama, they mention that by Allah Ta'ala's statements, إِلَّا الْمُصَلِّينَ That verily, how you escape these characteristics of being one who is miserly, one who is stingy, one who is self-centered, one who doesn't care about anyone else, one who is not thankful unto Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, one who is not patient. How do you escape these characteristics? What is the escape? That it is inside of the prayer. The prayer is that which will allow you to escape, to rise above this lowly condition, to rise above the lowly condition of the human beings who are stingy, self-centered, only worried about themselves, those who are not patient, those who do not give back. What is the way out? The salah. A salah of salah. If we want to have outstanding characteristics, if we want to have outstanding morals, outstanding traits, outstanding attributes, it's possible, but not without the salah. The salah, the salah, ya ibadullah. Alhamdulillah, ala ni'mat al Islam. All praise and thanks belong to Allah Azza wa Jal, the one who has legislated the salah upon us, the one who has guided us to know about the salah, the one who has given us the success in praying. Alhamdulillah, hamda, hamda. Hada, aqulu qawli hada, wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum, wa li jami'i al-muslimin, fa astaghfiru, fa innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ba'd. Ya ibadullah, the salah is so important. So important. Allah Ta'ala, after describing to us the general nature of man, or the specific characteristic of the disbeliever, Allah Ta'ala, He says, إِلَّا الْمُصَلِّينَ Except for those who pray. And then Allah Ta'ala gives us a description of these individuals. Those who they constantly pray. They're always praying. Prayer for them is a constant inside of their life. No matter what happens to you in life, no matter what you go through, no matter how low you ever get, no matter if you hit rock bottom even, never stop praying. Because the way out the way out, the way up, the way for prosperity, the escape from whatever calamity, that it is essential that you pray. That is an essential and a key component of all success. Allah Ta'ala, He says that these are those who they are upon their prayers all the time. They pray all the time. Until Allah Ta'ala's statement, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ We see it again. And those who they preserve their prayers. They preserve their prayers. أُولَٰئِكَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ مُكْرَمُونَ These ones, they will be in Jannah. They will be honored. They will be in Jannah. They will be honored. Ya ibadullah. We have our ups, we have our downs. Sometimes we're happy, sometimes we're sad, sometimes a good situation, sometimes calamity. We need the prayer. All the time. Allah Ta'ala, He mentions... Allah Ta'ala, He commands, we should say. Allah Ta'ala, He commands us. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ And seek for help. Seek for help. Look for assistance. In what? In patience and prayer. Sabr والصلاة. Patience and prayer. A key component to all success. How do you get through a calamity? People want to know. The people desire to get through a calamity. Is it possible to get through a calamity? Yes, it is possible, but not without salah. Not in reality. Not without salah. Because no matter what may touch you from a seemingly prosperous yani thing, what matter what may what, what may touch you from seeming prosperity, if there's no salah in your life, then know that you're on your way to ultimate misery. So no matter what may touch you from bliss in this dunya. 
If there's no salah as a key component in your life, no salah in your life, then no, you're on your way to ultimate misery. This is the reality. And no matter what calamity you're going through, no matter how li little the food is, no matter how little the money is, no matter how little your resources, no matter how much your sickness is, no matter how much your aches and your pains and your, and, and your situation, no matter how much it seems like it's stacked against you, if salah is there, then know that you are on your way to the ultimate success. Know that you are on your way to the success that is a success that will last forever. Know that you are on your way to a bliss that is a bliss that will last forever. Know that you are on your way to being truly successful because no matter what comes in this dunya, it is all temporary. It comes for a little bit, then it goes away. That's the nature of this dunya. We're here for a little bit, then we go away. We're not here no more. But the hereafter, that's forever. The hereafter is forever. So no matter what happens in this little bit of period of time that we're here in the dunya, as long as you got the salah, as long as you're praying, as long as you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what happens, you know what? It don't even matter. Because for the poorest person, the one that had the roughest life from the believers, when they are put, not even put, the Prophet said they are dipped into the Jannah. Short period of time into the Jannah. And then they will be asked, did you ever experience any hardship? They will say, by my Lord, never. Never had any hardship. This was the believer that had the worst life. The poorest of the believers. Soon as they taste the gentleman, I ain't never had no, no problems. The kafir that was, had the most from the dunya, from the kuffar, will be dipped inside the hellfire and asked, did bliss ever come to you? And they will say, I never knew no about no bliss. I ain't never had no bliss. Never no happiness. I don't know anything about that. Because forever is forever. What's a distinguishing characteristic or from the distinguishing characteristic between this and between that? The salah. The Prophet said, That the covenant between us, between them, the difference between us and between them is the salah. Whoever abandons it, then they will have disbelieved. Allah Ta'ala, He says, And there will come after them a group, a generation of people. They will leave off the prayer. They will abandon the prayer. What terror shahawat and they will follow their desires. Allah Ta'ala says, Fasofa yalqawna. And they will be thrown into the hellfire. They will be plunged inside of the hellfire. This is the result for those who leave off the salah, abandon the salah. Then for them, what is the hellfire? Wa'iyadu billah. Illa, except for who? Illa man tab, except for those who repent. Ya ibadullah. Whatever has happened to you up until this point inside of your life is over. It's done. It has passed. We can't go back. We can't change it. So if there's individuals, any individual who this may reach them, and they weren't steady on their prayers. They weren't praying. You're alive. You still have time. It's not too late. Allah Ta'ala says that those who abandon the prayer, who leave off their prayer, then yes, they'll be thrown into the hellfire. Illa man tab, except for the one who repents. So if you repent, that's it. The one who repents is like the one who never made the sin. The one who repents is like the one who never made the sin. So whatever you did yesterday, cry about it, yes. Have remorse, yes. Feel bad about it, yes. Use that pain, use that regret as fuel, fuel for your fire to make sure that you're presently, you're not doing what you did then. To make sure that presently, you're praying. To make sure that you are preserving of your prayers. To make sure you are steady upon your prayers. To make sure that now for the rest of your life, you are from those who will pray all the time. That this becomes now a key component in your life. That to even think and to have a thought of not praying, not even possible. Not even possible. One of the ulama, when he was on his deathbed, when he was on his deathbed, and he was slipping in and out of consciousness. He was slipping in and out of consciousness. Every time he regained consciousness, the first thing he would ask for, bring me water, I have to pray. How, many, how, many, how long was I out? How many prayers did I miss? Because he knew, he understood. This was the most important thing he could be doing now on his deathbed. It's praying to make sure that he goes out like that. Not that, oh, it's an excuse, I'm dying, it's okay. And, uh, no. 
as long as you are alive until death comes to you be from those who are steady upon your prayer if you can't pray standing up then pray sitting down if you can't pray sitting down then pray laying down pray ya ibad because if you want to be successful, that is possible, but not without the salah. If you want to go to Jannah, that is possible, but not without the salah. If you want to escape the hellfire, that is possible, but not without the salah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who are steady upon their prayers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ayy wa fiqini wa iyaakum lima yuhibbuhu wa yaruba wa an yaj'alana mubarakan haythu ma kunna wa an yaj'alana min man idha urti ya shakar wa dhubutuli ya sabar wa dha adhna ba istaghfar fa inna haulai thalath unwanu sa'ada hadha faqimu salam.